I have gotten ripped off by more than a couple people. And today I'd like to tell you about it and tell you how I keep it from happening ever again. Hey everyone, I'm Cole Caparoon. Thanks for stopping by for another video. Now, this is a pretty common thread, uh, and unfortunately it does go both ways. I hear stories constantly about artists that have gotten ripped off from producers and engineers. Uh, but obviously I'm not an artist. I am a producer and a mix engineer and play guitar on a ton of stuff and master tons of stuff. And So this is coming at it from the studio side and how I protect myself against these things. Now, there has just been so many instances that I can hardly recall them all of starting a project and then the artist or band just literally disappearing, just not not replying to any messages, not answering their phone, never hearing from them again, and I had, you know, whatever, 15, 20 hours in a project already, and that was time that was just completely lost because I couldn't get a hold of them to even get a payment or schedule anything to fix it. But even though I had fought this for a long time, there was two instances, two different situations that uh, really stand out to me when I think back and uh, really or what catapulted me into the way that I do business now. Now, the first one was a uh, rapper who used to be on Interscope, I think, back in the day. He was he was not a household name, but he was a rapper that uh, you've probably heard the music. I'm not going to name names with any of this stuff. I was just like, well, he's, he's serious. He's legit. Uh, so we started working on the project. We got like three or four songs in, and I was sending him masters like done. And then all of a sudden he ghosted me and I never got paid for any of that stuff. <laughs> I was like, what a, what a terrible idea to send somebody a master before getting paid. And so at that moment, I kind of stopped doing that for independent artists. He was independent at the time. Then uh, I started doing some label work. I started having some bands come through the studio that were on uh, indie labels and major labels. And I will name names on this one. Uh, I waited 10 months once to get paid from Sony. Now, I did eventually get paid. Uh, Sony did not rip me off. However, it took 10 months to get paid. And this is not, I was not in the place that I am now. I mean, I wouldn't want to wait 10 months to get paid now. But, like, I was starving back then. And I mean, like, power getting shut off at my house, starving. So waiting 10 months to get paid was brutal. Uh, and so that situation, that single situation, ended up making me reevaluate how I charge everyone. Now, obviously, all the times that I had done sessions and just flat out not get, gotten paid, in addition to this Sony deal... Uh, the, this all was like super frustrating to me uh, because I didn't really have the clout or the rep, you know, I didn't, ha I wasn't well known enough to charge a hundred percent up front, or at least I didn't feel like people would do that. But simultaneously, I just I couldn't keep working for free and, or working and not getting paid ever or working and waiting forever to get paid. So what I came up with, and this is what I want to explain in this video, and hopefully that this helps some of you figure out how to avoid these things. So what I came up with is how do I make sure that I'm always paid for my work while also not charging 100% up front? Now, the reason I thought this was for two things. One, it's hard to convince people to pay 100% up front when they don't really know fully what they're getting into, especially in the earlier years of my career. But also, I work with so many independent artists. I did then, and I still do now. I work with so many independent artists that it's hard for a lot of them to come up with the money all at once, especially when we're talking full albums. So here's what I came up with. Uh, I take a deposit to get on the calendar. And this deposit, I'll tell you exactly what I charge here in a minute. This deposit is to hold your spot on the calendar. But this deposit also covers your first couple sessions, depending on the song and the arrangements and, and whatnot. Uh, we, I take the deposit, that gets you a place on the calendar, and then we work our way through until we have used up that money. And then I take another payment. And then we work our way through until we have used up that money. And then usually by the third payment, if we're talking just one song at a time, singles here, and then usually that gets us through to mixing, to the production being done, ready to mix, at which case I have a exact dollar amount for the remaining balance for your song, and then I take that payment before I mix and master. And what this does is this makes sure that 
if I'm working, I've already been paid for my work. But it also gives the artist a little bit of leeway, like if things, and this doesn't happen very often, but if things aren't going well, they can walk away from a project without being thousands of dollars in. Or if they're having a hard time coming up with the money, but they really want to get started, they can do that without having 100% of it up front. All the while, I'm never, ever working without getting paid first. Now, unfortunately, labels don't work this way. So I have only done one or two label projects since that Sony situation. And I just, in that moment, I decided, it was a big band, it was a, it was a popular band, and I just decided in that moment that I didn't care if I never worked on another huge record again, I'm getting paid up front for everything that I do. And if a label isn't willing to do that, I don't care. I'm just, I'm not going to do the project. I may reevaluate that stance as time goes on here simply because I'm financially in a place where I don't necessarily need to be paid up front all the time, finally, 21 years into this career. So what I currently charge depends on exactly what we're doing, but the vast majority of my work, probably 60% of my work, is I'm producing the song, I'm mixing the song, I'm mastering the song. I'm hiring all the session players, I'm paying for them out of my pocket or out of the money the artist has paid me already. Uh, and then I'm playing however many instruments on the song is necessary. So in this situation, I take a $500 deposit, and that gets you on the calendar. We work, that gets you through drum, the drum session and basic rhythm tracks, and then I take another $500 payment before we track vocals. And then that usually, unless there's a lot of session players on the song, that usually can get us all the way through up until mixing and mastering, so that way I'm not coming out of pocket. Because that's the main thing, I don't wanna come out of pocket for this stuff, because that's how, that's how you have the possibility of getting screwed and ripped off. Once the production is completely approved, ready to mix, there are no further things to be added or changed in the song, then I take the, a final payment. Now, total cost for me to do a single from start to finish is somewhere in the ballpark of like $1,800 to like $2,200 per song. Now, again, that depends on the song, depends on how intricate the production is, depends on how much time I have to spend editing a singer's vocals, depends on how many session players I have to hire. There's a lot that goes into this ballpark, but this is also what allows me to just, there's never any ruffled feathers between me and the client over money because I tell them, we talk about the song, I hear a work tape, and then I'm like, okay, I think for the vision that I have for this song, or we discuss the vision for the song, I think this song is going to cost $1,800. And I always tell them it's like plus or minus a couple hundred bucks. So that way that we go into this knowing, uh, but also that keeps me from overcharging artists. So that way I don't think a song is going to cost $2,200 and we get to the end and it went super smoothly and everything was super fast and, and it was super easy. And really, I only spent enough time on it to charge them $1,800. So now I'm in the spot of, do I just keep the extra $400? Do I refund them $400? Do I, I don't want to deal with any of that. Uh, I just want to give artists the best product that I can for the most appropriate amount of money. I won't, I won't say cheapest because that's not a thing that I'm interested in doing. I'm interested in quality, not affordability necessarily. But that's how I charge for a single. Now you can, whatever you're charging, what I would recommend you do if you like this approach is break it apart into three payments. Whatever you think your average song cost is, break it apart into three payments. Now for mixing and for mastering, I'm just full payment up front in order to get on the calendar. So if someone wants to hire me to mix, then I charge $500 per song currently to mix a song, mix and master. And in that rate, I give people the first mix up to three revisions and the master. And I'll print them a couple stems if they need it, like, some, like a print of backing tracks or something. But if they want the song fully stemmed out, that costs extra. And I take the full payment up front 
in order to get on the calendar. And then my turnaround time varies depending on how busy I am. Like right this minute, it's a couple weeks. And that's how I keep from getting burned on mixing. Also, especially because in mixing, once I've mixed the song once, I've already done what I think is best for the song. I send you that first mix. That's what I think is appropriate. And then every tweak after that is to make you, the client, more happy. And so to me, once I've done that first mix, I've earned the money. And I just include a couple revisions so that way people are, you know, more comfortable with the whole arrangement. I don't think unlimited revisions are a good thing. I did used to do unlimited revisions for a long time and it was part of my sales pitch. We're gonna work until you are happy with this. I don't do that anymore because for most people, for most clients, it was perfectly fine and it was easier to sell them on that. However, the couple that ruined it really ruined it for everyone else because I mean, there's a, I can't tell you how many songs over a decade, a period of time where I was doing that that were 20 revisions in on a single song. And that's just, that's crazy. We're not making things better at this point. We're just changing stuff just to change it. Now there are links down below for every piece of gear that I use and those links do go to Sweetwater and Sweetwater is sponsoring this video. So anytime any of you guys need to purchase any piece of musical gear, you can jump on any one of my videos, click on any one of the links in the description below. And then once you're on the site, you can purchase anything you were gonna buy anyway. It costs you nothing extra and it goes a long ways to help support this channel and help me keep making videos just like this. So thank you Sweetwater for sponsoring this video and thanks to you guys for using those links anytime you need to buy anything. I do the very best that I can on this channel to be transparent. There's no secrets with me. Like I, I just, there's no reason to have secrets. There's no reason to keep anything I'm doing from anyone watching this channel. So I hope that this video helped you. I hope this got your wheels turning, or if you've struggled with this, I hope that you at least found some inspiration in this to figure out how to not get screwed, because it's frustrating, especially in the earlier years when you're starving to death. It's real frustrating, and, and I want that to not happen to any of you. So thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.